Hello, welcome back to a rainy day in England. Here we are, here we are. Okay, so yes, welcome back. And if you're new, please uh, stick around and maybe you'll find something interesting uh, or hear something interesting, not just in this video, in this podcast, but maybe in some of the older previous podcasts I've done. All right, so today we're talking about Hansel and Gretel. Well, actually, it's the Brothers Grimm. Now, the Brothers Grimm is a selection of books for children written a long time ago, probably in the, I think it was the 1800s. Some very interesting stories. A lot of them were based in and around the Black Forest in Germany. So these stories are, they've got a, a lot of history in, in England. We've been, you know, understanding and read these stories to our to our children for a long, long time. Right. So I've got some notes, as always, to look professional, but this is unedited and unscripted for you, the listener. This is for you. Natural native conversation. Right. OK, so Brothers Grimm books, storybooks, bedtime reading. Why, why we read these to our children? I don't know. It it would give me the uh, give me the creeps and, and nightmares if, if I read this now as an adult. All right. So a lot of these stories are. How do I put this? They're just stories. But there is an element of truth in these stories, which makes them a bit interesting, especially as an adult now listening uh, and reading these stories. So. They are interesting stories, but the truth behind them is much more interesting on where it came from and how it it um, came to be a story. All right. I don't know if you heard that, but my my computer made some noises. Oh, well, let's carry on. Stiff up her lip. Let's carry on. Right. That's an old British saying. Stiff up her lip. Just keep going. Keep going. Right. OK, so we'll keep going. Right. I'm going to show you and share with you the uh, the notes I've written about about um, Brothers Grimm. Here we go. Here they are. OK, here they are. Uh, and I'm now on the other camera. Right. OK, let's have another look. Bear with me a moment. Bear with me a moment so you can see them, but I can't see them up close yet. Bear with me. I keep saying that bear with me. I don't have a bear with me. If I did have a bear, would it be a koala bear or would it be a polar bear? Hmm. Right, right, okay. Hansel and Gretel, the scary truth. Right. So as I said, like they, they're classic. They are classic tales. They've been around for a long time. In and they're a part of children's literature. Literature. Okay. Uh, much darker and indeed scarier truth. Right. At first glance, Hansel and Gretel. That that's the book I thought of first and, and why I started to research into this uh, and got some help. Right, Hansel and Gretel. It's a story about two siblings who outwitted a wicked witch and find their way back home. However, in a closer examination, reveals the story's unsettling aspects. The most frightening truth is the tale's underlying theme of child abandonment and neglect. Oh my goodness, that doesn't sound doing good, does it? Oh, wow. All right. In the story, Hansel and Gretel's parents are uh, facing a famine making the children the chilling decision to abandon their children in the woods, hoping they wouldn't survive. I mean, that's pretty dark. Just that. Just saying that. Uh, I mean, I know you ought to look after yourself, but most people these days put their children first. Interesting when back then in the 18 and 1900s, children were seen and not heard, you know, and children were just, a pain that, that you have to carry around with you, a pain to feed, you know, that, that you didn't really want around. And then and then, you know, they made the children work up chimneys and things like that. Chimneys, I hear you ask. Yes. Chimney. I, I say chimney because it's kind of spelt chimney. Uh, it's a very odd word. But that's that's the stack on the side of the house that allows the smoke to go up from the fire beneath and allow the smoke to go up a chimney chimney you may remember if you've ever watched it is the 
the old film from the 70s. Um, oh, Mary Poppins. And I've covered Mary Poppins before, but there's one song in the film, Mary Poppins film, uh, called The Chimney Song and the Chimney Sweeps. Chim, chimney, chim, chimney, chim, chim, charu, da, 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 for you. All right, I don't know the words and I'm not, I'm not an artist. I'm not a singer. I'm not a singer. <laughs> I know that. I know that. All right. But anyway, that's, that's one of the songs. Chim, chimney. All right, up a chimney. Chimney. It's, it's a difficult word to pronounce. Everybody pronounces it different. It's a chimney. Right. Okay, where were we at? Um, abandoning the children in the woods hoping they won't survive uh, the depiction of the parents cruelty and abandonment is a harsh reality that many children face in the world well even now actually making a terrifying reflection on real life issues which we cover more of in a moment also the witch's character adds an eerie layer to the narrative she represents not only the danger lurking in the forest but also the fear of being lured by a stranger into a dangerous situation now there's another film from the same age um that wasn't mary poppins what was it oh, i'm gonna have to think now it's gonna really irritate me now they had a child snatcher it was <laughs> it was the film chitty chitty bang bang from around the same era, late late seventies, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, it was called. Really good film, even for back in the day. Um, again, that film also had this one of the same main actors. What was his name now? Um, Dick. His name was Dick. Um, he was also in in the. Uh, late 90s early 2000s in a tv show for diagnosis murder diagnosis murder yeah so his real name is richard but his stage name or sorry not his stage name but his his shortened name shall we say we, we shorten his name is dick van dyke that's it yes get in there my brain is working today dick van dyke so he, he was in the film chitty chitty bang bang and he was in the film Mary Poppins, all right, as, as the supporting role. All right. Dick Van Dyke, that was his name. Right, I'm trying to lose where I was going from then. Um, dangerous situations. And there was a, a child catcher in that film. So the idea of, of trafficking these days, like, like um, uh, woman trafficking and girl trafficking, is not a new concept. It, it's been around for a long, long time. The, but the idea of kidnap and, and trafficking and selling and, and taking of young, vulnerable, small people, I shouldn't say small people, young, vulnerable um, children is is, uh, is a really dark and, and, what would you say, a really dark and horrible thing to think about. You know, we want to protect our children as parents. In, in this era, in this day. But I think people weren't so concerned about their children in the 1800s and early 1900s. So that, that theme has been around for a long time that, that there, are, there are people out there that want to kidnap and steal the children. So that message getting across back then is still relevant now. You know, how, how it's, it's got worse actually. Even though, even though there's a lot less kidnappings and a lot less crimes actually committed regarding children, there's tons more CCTV. I think the UK is like the second or third most um, CCTV per person in the country. CCTV, closed circuit television per person. It's a very monitored state, the C uh, CCTV. So my point is that even schools have railings and gates and high walls and things like that to stop you going near the children. Like everybody is a threat and they're dangerous. It's, it's a little bit over the top too much nowadays, too much. All right, let's ca carry on. Right then. 
being lured away by children. Okay. Uh, the idea that children must be wary of seemingly kind individuals. Yeah, you hear about people trying to encourage children over with puppies or kittens and things like that or, or, or sweets. Hmm. Uh, it does resonate with the real world now. Yeah, okay. The gingerbread man. Oh, I love that story. The gingerbread man. Okay. While whimsical, that's a good word, isn't it? Whimsical is a really nice word. So whimsical means carefree and relaxed and dreamy. Like, oh, I'm having a carefree, whimsical day. The story was whimsical. The song is whimsical. Okay. Whimsical on the surface is a, another chilling element. It showcases a twisted, surreal world where children are tempted and ensnared. And I think is that in regards to um, the food and the sweets and the candy, those kind of things. Ultimately, Hansel and Gretel is a cautionary tale that touches upon complex and discontent. Yeah, we covered that. Uh, whatever. Uh, warns of cruelty and strange. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. I don't know why I made it so long. All right. OK, let's look at some other interesting, other interesting books. Right. OK. Little Red Riding Hood. What's that about? Little Red Riding Hood. Dangers of uh, naivety and trusting strangers. Cautionary tale of potential risks posed by predatory individuals. OK, we're kind of going over the same thing again here. Again, still very dark and scary. Uh, Cinderella. Now, Cinderella, everybody thinks is innocent and sweet and lovely. But it depicts child abuse and neglect by the stepmother and the sisters. Um, and the injustice of cruelty beneath the magic. Well, without the magic, it's a pretty awful program, uh, film, isn't it, and story. All right. What about Snow White? Uh, themes of jealousy and vanity. The wicked witch's queen, uh, the wicked queen's obsession over her own beauty. Uh, also troubling aspects like Snow White's abandonment and her encounter with the huntsman. Huntsman's cruelty. Again, like I said, it's, it's quite upsetting and dark to think these stories were that that um, that negative and scary and horrible. Rumpelstiltskin. I can't remember this one so much. Emphasizes the importance of keeping promises and the consequences of deceit. Now, this is a funny word, deceit. D-E-C-E-I-T. Deceit. I don't know why it's spelt that way. It's a funny old word, deceit. Another funny word like that is receipt. R-E-I-P-T, receipt. It's a bizarre word. So some words in the UK, in, in English language, are just bizarre and stupid. You know, like a silent H or a silent um, N for gnome. Have you ever heard gnome? If you don't know what a gnome is, look it up. It's like a little mystical creature, let's say like a fairy, right? And it's got a pointy hat and often they're fishing <laughs> and and the UK has got this stupid obsession, not so much now, but definitely sort of in the 2000s, obsession of having these things. And they're like made of, they're normally made of like um, mortar or china or plaster or Paris. So they're, they're not very strong, but they're quite weather resistant. People put them out by their ponds or in their gardens. Some people would even steal them from other people's garden just as a joke because they think it's funny. And now, now, oh my goodness, right? there is a film called the gnomes and gnome 2 there's two films like an animated gnomeo and juliet that's it gnomeo and juliet oh my goodness you should watch that it is really funny really funny based on romeo and juliet gnomeo and juliet i think it's called gnomes all right so yeah bizarre bizarre alleged characters statues they are little miniature statues painted bright colors Anyway, we digress, we digress. What are we talking about? We're talking about, I don't know, what were we talking about? What were we talking about? Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Um, consequence, deceit, receipt, gnome. S yeah, those those stupid, stupid English language words where there's a silent letter, like K for knight and knife with a K. So there's the K, the H, the, the N for gnome. I just don't understand why we have it. Obviously a throwback from Latin or, or previous connections with the root of the word. Right, okay. What else we got? The Pied Piper of Hamelin. 
consequences of broken promises again. Now, have you ever heard of the the fable Cry Wolf? I think it comes from the film Peter, not not film story Peter and the Wolf. There's a beautiful classical story made, uh, and and it's I think it was generally made originally for for classical musical instruments, you know, and it's beautiful. You should really look at it on YouTube. Um, Peter and the Wolf, the classical version. So it's a story about a boy crying wolf uh, and lies. All right. Pied Piper of Hamelin, like I said, broken promises, leading children away. Echoes the real world, fears of child abduction. There's a real dark theme going through this here. It's all about child child abduction, isn't it? It's pretty awful. Pretty awful, this child abduction and, uh, uh, and uh, children in the real world and, and um, neglect. It's pretty mean, horrible stuff here. Oh, awful, awful. Right, okay. Where were we? Where were we? Um, the 12 Dancing Princesses. I, I don't know this one. I don't know this one. Raised questions about free will and choice beneath the enchanting surface. Metamorphic deception of lack of agency when the prince uh, princess is forced to dance against her will. I've not seen that one. The Frog Princess, okay. Uh, the Charming Transformation story. The um, Now that kind of reminds me of Beauty and the Beast as well. Maybe the same sort of thing. Kissing a frog, teaching a lesson, look behind the appearances. Oh, okay, that's a slightly different, you know, don't judge a book by its cover, that kind of, that kind of attitude and theme. All right. Uh, the Fisherman and His Wife. Again, I don't know that one. Danger, greed, consequences. Um, insatiable wishes granted by a magical fish. Oh, don't know that one. The Juniper Tree. The theme of abuse, murder and supernatural rebirth. That sounds like a great film. <laughs> I want to watch that one. Um, dark and unsettling narrative. Cruelty and redemption. Ah, okay, okay. Right. So, yeah, that's all the tales I've got here at the moment. So the Brothers Grimm. The Brothers Grimm are uh, pretty scary and upsetting. Um, a lot around children, neglect, abuse and things like that. It's really quite sad, quite sad. And like I said earlier about the modern day, the modern day um, CCTV and gates and, and things like that around the churches. Uh, churches around the schools around the schools so although i said before in the uk there is there is a little bit of crime and, and there is some poverty in specific areas you know sort of micro pockets of, of poverty often in the inner cities that there there isn't really that uh, there isn't a lot you know so there's this modern day age with cctv and and um uh, good policing and and the prisons and things like that. There there isn't a huge amount of crime. There there's a lot of uh, opportunities and, and company not companies charities that help. So we've got lots of like the Samaritans. So if uh, a, a mental health support sometimes can take a long time to get into, but there are lots of charities to help people, the homeless people. So if you're well enough and smart enough to look for it, you can often find some help or support somewhere, um, often more likely in the cities, you know? So, so there, is, there is ways of helping yourself um, getting out of, of, of these situations. But thinking about the Brothers Grimm and those stories, again, it's still very dark to, to, to think and to know and constantly be reminded that there's a lot of darkness in the world in regards to protecting our vulnerable individuals. And yeah, I, I, I don't think it's like this all over the world. Uh, I think maybe this was maybe much more of a, an era, a past era, an era gone by, you know, maybe a hundred years ago or less. Definitely, definitely for, for us in the 60s and 70s, there was a lot more nasty and vicious crimes. But this day and age, the crime and, and um, 
violence. That's what I want to say. And violence is a lot less. People are much more vigilant. We have a lot of a lot of people looking out for the vulnerable. So there's people looking out for the elderly. There's people looking out for the children or those that have um, extra needs, like the special needs individuals. There's a lot of government organisations. Now there's Care Quality Commission that that regulates and checks on on people that businesses that give a service to those that are vulnerable. So if you if you're an adult and you go get your car washed, it's regulated by by I don't know the the waters agency and things like that. But if you're a child and you're in care, or if you're an elderly person and you're in care, there is there is a whole load, I should say, a plethora of paperwork and regulation and best practice to help those businesses prove on paper that they are caring and doing what they can to help support and look after those individuals that are vulnerable in need like the children and the elderly and those with um, lesser capacity to make a decision for themselves. That often can include a homeless person or somebody that is um, having substance and alcohol abuse issues. Dependency. That's the word I want. Dependency. So, yeah, there, there is a lot of protection out there nowadays to, to help um, those that are less fortunate. So that's a good thing about the UK. That's one of the things I like when I come back to the UK uh, it, it is a lot of those kind of like safety nets and and don't get me wrong they are not perfect they are you know we hear of cases of people falling through the safety net falling through the the um, the gaps but a lot of the time most people are, are are supported and offered help so you have a lot of agencies that overlap like like the NHS social services the police teachers carers uh, nurses that a lot of them overlap so so now we're able to build up a bigger picture if if for example somebody's been abused you know m one person might might notice some some red flags now if you don't know red flag is the term we use for something that feels wrong something that's not quite right maybe maybe um, uh, a child is um, having continence issues when they are a bit older let's say when they're like five six seven eight years old and that shouldn't be a problem at this age maybe there's something going on that we don't know about maybe there's something at school maybe there's something at home maybe even a nurse picks up on a child having bruises where she shouldn't have bruises like at the top of her thighs um, so, so there are a lot of overlapping agencies to help, to help build a safety net for those vulnerable individuals. And as I said before, children are, are often the first to, to fall through the, the safety net. So I'm very, very glad and, and happy that I live in the UK where we have a lot of this protection and safety net. Because it's not in a lot of other countries. I've recently come back from Asia and I see there there's there's a lot of people in need and and I feel bad. I can't help everybody but but you do your bit, you know, you try to alleviate your guilt and you try to do a little bit for other people. But there's a lot of support and help needed for some of these countries in Asia that are that are um underfunded that the, the gov government doesn't have or the charities are very very underfunded. There are some charities but it's, it's a, a small pot of money and a big, big problem. But, but not just Asia. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm sure the same could be said for some regions in Africa. So there's a lot of work out there to, to be done to, to help those that are less fortunate and, and maybe help policies with, uh, with governments and other agencies within, within some of these countries to, to help them build up some safety nets and build up some infrastructure to help support and uh, and and um i don't know give better opportunities for those that are struggling and those that are vulnerable almost like we have here in the uk uh and um and other countries 
Some other countries are even better than UK for their infrastructure regime and policies and, and things like that. So those, those are what I take my hat off to. So that's a term of respect. We would take our hat off in the olden days to a lady or somebody of respect or somebody, yeah, somebody of respect. So yeah, those other countries are, are also very, very good. Okay, right, so I'm gonna wrap it up there. Um, if, you've, if you've got some experience with this in your country, if there's some charities that you're involved with, let me know in the comments, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you think. What's your thoughts? All right, that's it for today. Um, if you get a minute, please just give me a like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate that. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care for now. Bye-bye.